Can you ever have a sexier name for an aeroplane than the Flaming Pencil? Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Bristol T188. Hi everybody, it's Avengel. Welcome back to the channel. And this British thing that looks like it could be a Blackbird or it could be an F-104 is the Bristol Type 188. Nicknamed the Flaming Pencil, it's a high-speed research aircraft designed to meet an operational requirement for a test bed capable of getting more than Mach 2. It sucked at that. It got Mach 1.8, 1.9. But it did a huge amount of work in terms of uh, testing structures, oils, hydraulic fluids, bearings, tyres, windows, cabin environments at high temperatures and high speeds. So it became a very important research vehicle for developing Concorde. Now, it first flew in 1962. Its last flight was in 1964. And two of them were built. We had XF923 and xf 9 Two, six, both included with this release and we only have one remaining and that's at Cosford the Royal Air Force Museum now she had a crew of one she was 77 feet long a wingspan of 25 feet 13 feet high powered by two de Havilland Griffin or Gryan junior engines the DGJ 10R turbojets with uh, 10,000 foot-pounds of torque and a reheat of 14,000 spicy that will cook your barbecue. Well, like I said, the aircraft was a test vehicle. Now, this is by TG Sims, and we're going to have a lot of fun with this today because I'm going to take it from Cosford up to Aria Valley and try and be the fastest thing in the British skies. Now, we said the real one can't get up to its original design speed of 2, Mach 2. This one will have you going more than Mach 1.8. And we're going to try and do exactly that today. It's going to be fun. And uh, I'm looking forward to doing this. This thing is like actually operating and flying a spaceship. It is complicated. So without further ado, we'll go outside and take a quick look around. Turn my head off rather than everything's flopping around. So exterior wise, it's not particularly dramatic or complicated as an aircraft. It's well modeled, well made. Nice little features like uh, covers for the engines. And a donut for its... Pito probe. She's a particularly skinny little girl. There's the gear. Not a huge amount of detail in the wheel wells, but interesting regardless. It'll be fun to watch this happen though when the gear goes up, because the gear swivels and rotates in order to watch that in action. But the gear actually folds oddly. You'll see what I mean, because it has to fit them into this, so the wheel stays in the same position whilst the gear comes up. It's cool. You'll see that. A very unique landing gear. Well, it looks a lot like a lot of other similar aircraft. In fact, it looks a lot like a land speed aircraft or land speed record vehicles we've seen a couple of uh, from England. But either way, let's get ourselves into the cockpit here and familiarise ourselves. So I will put the power on real quick, which is down here. There we go. And we shall unlock the cockpit, which is by doing this lever here and this canopy here. And that pops the top, slides back there. Avenger not wearing a flight suit. Probably not advised, but we'll see. Now we're going to go through our start checks and get this thing fired up and going. So master or parking brake is on. Parking brake is on. Batteries on. Indicators for undercarriage three green. Uh, test lights illuminated. All test lights illuminate. Fuel tank quantity low lights are set they won't click for some reason but they are meant to illuminate and check spill valve and reheat lights do engage and check okay dg ground and ac ground or dc and ac to ground to f they're in ground mode correct pito heat is gonna go where is it I have a switch which countermands everything I want to actually do with it properly. I think it's one of these down here. If I recall correctly. No, that's our, that one. The switch is engaged, so we know it's actually technically on, so that's fine. Stupid controllers. They're always fun, aren't they? Uh, emergency hydraulics are switched to normal. I did that IFF, we don't want that one. Emergency hydraulics to normal. They are set to normal. Fuel tanks, pumps, all on. So there's down here. Uno, dos, tres, or ein, zwei, drei, vier, fünf, sechs. 
There, close enough. Uh, they're all on. Put me to turn to black. They have turned to black. Engine master switch to on. Engine master switch is on. Engine ignition switch one or two on. One is on. Starter to on. That's it starting technically. And we'll watch the engine come alive here as we make sure we have the fuel engaged and it will start up now. And whilst it does that, we will set ignition for that one on and we'll go to our engine two. Give it low pressure fuel cock on as well. Engines are coming up now for us. They're going. And whilst we do that, we'll check as these things will go to black with the oil pressure once the N2 is 50%. So once this hitch is here, we should be good. And that will turn to black. Black. Bingo, we got that one. Okay, and... Lens set light is by 60%. That's come off. Great. Hydraulic pressure increasing to 3,000 PSI. I believe that's our hydraulic pressure there. We're at 3,000 PSI. Okay. Let's close the canopy on us here. Feels very much like being in a spaceship, this one. Texturing is quite nice, I will say. For a British aircraft, they do sometimes feel like coal pits. This one's at least brightly coloured as a coal pit. And in typical British fashion, just look at this higgledy piggledy mess of an instrument panel. Okay, everything looking great there. Uh, turbo generator to on. Turbo generator is this one, is on. DC and AC to flight. They are set to flight. The switch is on. Anti skid to on. It should be down here somewhere. We need to make sure our IFF is turned on. Flutter is on, and anti skid is on. Locks on and locks flowing. Locks on and locks is flowing. We have locks flowing. Engine started to off. Engine starter is off. I mean, this is the so British. You've got a bake like pull, push, toggle. You've got chunky switches like this one with a rotating dial. you got whatever this is. You've got what appeared to be wooden leather. This is so British, it hurts. This is so bodged. This feels like an aircraft designed and built in a garden shed that can do Mach 2. You'd have to be insane to fly this. All right, so pilot notes we have here are takeoff at 90% N2 dry thrust, 0 30 degree flaps, lift off at 190. Use tailplane trim to counter, tuck under experienced through Mach 1. And altitude for high speed test run as engines surge at high speed and low altitude due to non variable air intakes. Okay, so we're heading to Valley. And our heading for Valley should be that way. I believe my heading... It's not going to tell me my heading, is it? Because I should have looked that up before we started this. And uh, invariably, I am an idiot. Pretty, I can't find a navlog. That would be far too simple. Navlog. There we go. Uh, so we're looking for 296 is our heading we want. And make sure you've turned off the AI radios. That's turned off. Okay. Let's get this thing moving, shall we? So, I believe from where we are currently at Cosford, we need to go that way to the right. So, we'll do just that. Okay, parking brakes are disengaged. <sighs> Let's have some fun, shall we? Very confined visibility, but honestly, it's aircraft like this in the sim that really enthuse me because we have a billion Cessnas, we have Pipers, we have LSAs out of the wazoo. But it's pieces of history like this where there's one or two of these aircraft made that really feel special. Because there's no other way you get to fly this or experience this. And you've got the early American aircraft in other sims, you know, the X1s, etc. But to fly a British test bed vehicle... And, and frankly, any aircraft that has frickin' grab handles in the cockpit scares the bejeebus out of me. And we're going to go for that today. So, get ourselves to the runway. 
This is default cost, but I do not have add-on scenery for it. I probably should at some point. That should probably scare me too. Right. Runways to our right there. We'll pretend we've got clearance for a test flight. There's nobody else in the area. We're fine. And I will need to establish where my directional gyro is. If in fact we have one. That'd be awkward. Oh, we do. Down there. Right below me. Okay. I will set that up before we take off. Got ourselves around here. Okay. And holding position whilst we establish this. So we're going to want this set to... 2... 9 or 6. Bingo. And we do technically have autopilot functionality uh, back here. So we have actually got that. Altitude autopilot heading, etc, etc. So we can set this as well. Da, 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 da. well. We'll try it. We'll try and set the autopilot once we get to altitude. And we'll try and go for the speed. That'll keep it more stable than me. Okay. Ready to take off. Someone in the last video commented that I'm a bit of a test pilot at the moment. Yeah, I am. It's kind of fun, isn't it? I love hopping into new aircraft that I don't really understand how they're going to behave and seeing what will happen. We'll go for a no flaps takeoff this time because I don't want to influence how it's going to take off on me. Our trim is neutral right now. So we're looking for 90% dry thrust. Okay, that is us at 90% dry thrust. We're releasing brakes and we're away. Looking for 190 on the speedo. That's going to be the top row. A bit of wobble on takeoff. That's oscillated caused by me. Not going to be close enough. Come on, Cosford. I'm going to have to pull this off the runway. Whoa. Okay, we're out. Let's go outside to watch that gear come in. Oh, it's already up, because my lever was still up. We'll pull it down and we'll show you. Look at this thing. How weird is that? Huh? Yeah, it folds up so it's neatly inside the body, which is super cool. How clean is that? And for the how big that gear is, that's really clean. All right, pull that up. All right. We're going to roll ourselves on course here as we're climbing through 5,000. Still climbing. Keep the nose up here. We've got more than enough thrust and we're still gaining speed. Right, we are on course. Roll level. Okay, still climbing. In fact, let's assist this, shall we? Keep it on 90% thrust there. Let's see what she'll do when we really put the uh, pedal down. We're losing a little speed right now, but we're still above 300. Pretty comfortably. And we're shooting up through 12,000. Nicely done. Just under 300, so plenty of room still to play with. Keeping it maxed at 90% on the thrust. Okay. 16,000. Okay, 18. We'll get up to about 30 and we'll do our speed run. So we'll set ourselves on course. Through 20,000 here. Thinner air, of course, means we'll go faster. It is, of course, important when you're doing speed testing. Okay, we're a little bit above 90 there on our N2. So we'll pull that back. Keep the aircraft contained. We're off course, so that's correct. This point is not really a rudder. 
into the correction. It's aileron and just allow it to come to a small course correction. Rudders lose efficacy. Well, we are slower. We'd actually be able to use the rudder more here. We're under 190, so drop that nose down as we're at 26,000 feet. Let that speed build up. Course is good. Okay, we're gaining speed and we're still climbing. Well, we're not quite climbing. Okay, I think we're positive right there, so that's okay. Looking for 30,000, then we'll let things settle. So visibility is not great when you're climbing, but it, it does feel like you are pinned inside this cockpit. It definitely reminds me of the early fast jets, the supersonic race. Quite exciting, honestly. You definitely feel like you're in a test vehicle, that's for sure. Okay, he's dropping a little speed here, but we're coming up on 30,000. We'll drop the nose down. Perfect. A couple of hundred feet no one's going to quibble about. Altitude hold and heading hold have been engaged. We're turning on course here. Why are we descending? I told you to put altitude hold on. It is on. Okay, it's just collecting us together. Okay, thrust is good where it's at currently. And we should be able to proceed on course like this. This honestly won't take us very long for this flight because of the uh, aircraft's performance. Speed's climbing up now. We're passing through Mach 0.8. And we'll, with the autopilot on, it'll correct for the, uh, the tuck under. We'll get it. The supersonic threshold. Look at the wooden toggles up here for the. Okay. You'd have to be insane to fly something like this from the British. Because I guarantee parts of this were definitely built in the garden shed. And bits of it look like they were. It seems like they didn't. There's no consistency in any instrumentation. You've got selections of toggles and, and bars. You've got dials and rotators and something from a bicycle and something from a Mario's wet dream. Everything seems different and nothing is consistent. Everything feels handmade. Which in something that's designed to get to Mach 2 feels terrifying. Okay. So quickly check the manual here does it dictate or tell me what power setting to go to it does not so we'll get to the uh, spill level on power so I'll advance the throttles here more power once the spill valves kick in we'll dial it back Okay, throttle still coming forward. Okay, let's set uh, that one on. Knocked it back slightly. We're at 100% N2. We're crossing the sound barrier shortly. Although she's struggling right now. I'll give it that. Where is my... Oh, there it is. It's a beautiful plane. Very beautiful plane. And we are screaming across England right now. But we are not yet transonic. We're approaching it very slowly. Which I must say is quite weird because the last time I flew this aircraft, it genuinely felt like we were going considerably faster. I did a quick test flight to make sure I could not ruin myself in a video and work my way out around the cockpit, checking the manual and diagrams to make sure I get this right. Because uh, British aircraft are complicated. What is that? Of course I'm fine on something. Don't even know what that does, so I'm not going to mess with it. We're teasing our way up here. I do appear to be slower than my previous test flight, which was at 10,000 feet, and I got to Mach 1.9. 
so... Unusual. We have both engines running. Both engines are in the green. Nothing should be causing any drag. And yet we are slow. This does confuse me. Quite unusual, I think. Oh, relight. Could have sworn there's a thing to press for that. I will regard the manual for a second, so I'm going to turn my head off for a moment. And you guys get to watch the view. Because I've not got my afterburners on, which is definitely telling. Reheat switches. There we go. Uh, reheat switches should be these two bad boys. That did not do it. Okay, that didn't do anything. Weird. Someone's probably screaming at me in the comments going, You didn't do this particular thing. And that would be correct. But I could try. But I seem to be stuck just subsonic, which is very unusual. Everything else is on that should be on. There's the bloody pito heat that was staring me in my face the entire time. Pito heat is on. Okay. Our reheat is turned on. Unless it's off. You eat to normal. Okay, yeah, that's good. Everything else is correct as it should be. Undercarriage is down and up and locked, sorry. Quite weird. Fuel cocks. A lot of these things have letters. But don't appear to do anything. As we are still just subsonic and I can't work it out. I have made sure my gear is up. My flaps are up. That is for sure. And yet, she doesn't want to go faster. How bizarre. It's like we're flying around with a drag chute. Well, that was drag. But it's not making us go faster. Weird. Uh. Uh-oh. Oh, we just lost left uh, engine, so that's not ideal. How am I going to solve this? So fuel cocks are on. Ignition is on. Engine start is on. And we'll go left starter. I've had roll back on two as well. Interesting. So I've had both engines flame out on me. We have got fuel remaining. Interesting. Are we getting start on engine one? Reheat off. Engine 2, starter engaged. It's coming alive. Give it its fuel. We should get engine start. Where are we? Are we over? Is that... It's already bloody angle C, so valley's down there. So we're over 
our target, but we're out of fuel. But we're not, because it still shows me having fuel. But we're at 30,000 feet with no engines in a British-made test vehicle. So this is about to get real interesting real fast. But that is Hollyhead down there, I believe. That is Hollyhead. Which puts Valley over here somewhere. There. It's there. Valley in sight. Airport in sight. I still have no relight on my engines. I have nothing on the engines. Interesting. There's every chance I did something stupid, but I don't think I did. Yeah. We're not getting... We have got low fuels. Not... Is it on or off? I don't know. Battery was turned off for some reason. Let's try this again. Igniting left. Now having the battery on probably didn't help. Nothing happening there. Okay, so this is definitely turned into a test flight, more of a test panic, which is okay. Uh, Valley is directly below us, so we're going to orbit the aircraft till we get down to an appropriate altitude here, and then we'll perform an emergency landing. And I'll work out what the hell I did wrong, because we certainly never made it to actual speed here, which I thought I would. And I can say I have been faster. I've been up to Mach 1.9. It is possible. Why that's not working, I don't know. Come on, you pig. Well, we're doing 300 knots without engines, so it's not a bad state of affairs. Fuel's on. We have apparently got fuel, so that shouldn't be the issue. I'm very uncertain as to what has caused this. So that's our oxygen system there. That is showing there. Fuel pounds should be 1,500. Alright, so there we are. Through 9,000 feet here. So, we're going to be aiming for Valley's main runway. So, we should be able to get another orbit or two round. This thing hasn't got a ton of lift, admittedly. But, uh, we're about to dead stick it. It's a supersonic test vehicle, which means... This is going to be interesting, because these things aren't designed to glide. Oh, God. Ugh. Uh, whatever I've done has led me into a situation that is quite exciting. And I'm looking forward to, to, to seeing if we make it. Because this feels very Neil Armstrong uh, <laughs> right now. <laughs> this is like ultimate test pilot crap. Things have gone horribly wrong. I didn't know what was wrong with the aircraft. I've run out of fuel or I've lost fuel. Starvation fuel. fuel. I don't know. But we're giving up on the engines. We're not getting a relight. So fuel is cut. Starter is disengaged. Engine start master is. Could you turn off, please? That'd be nice. Screw it, doesn't matter. Okay, so we are there. And we are sinking like a freaking rock right now. 3,000. Yeah, but that's, that's not ideal. I think we'll get a little orbit, maybe. I need to be very economical with this. The glide ratio doesn't feel fantastic, but I think we've got another. No, I'm going to extend. I'm going to extend and I'll make the turn because I don't know how much I'm going to scrub off doing that. Visibility for this kind of flying is not good. Uh, we're at 5,000 feet. I might have to push this down. Okay. I'm going to begin the turn and see what we lose here. If I have to push this down, I would. Oh, we're so high up. This can't be enough. We'll hit uh, Hollyhead Island, then we'll turn around. Because we're already passing through four, so we're dumping altitude here. And I've got speed brakes if I need them, so. Let's begin the turn. Oh, that's killing speed. That's killing speed and altitude. There's the runway. 
Okay, runway in sight. Gear staying up until the last possible second here. This is so surreal and quiet, I'm not sure I like it. Side slip here to line us up a bit better. Come on. There we go, piggy. Let's go. Treat this like a... Ugh. Sugar! Okay, speed is good, speed is good, speed is good. Uh, landing gear down. I don't know if I've got gear coming down. Speed brakes out. Oh, this is going to be bumpy. I have to force it down here. We're going way too quick to stop. Okay, and drag shoot out. There we go. Whew. We're stopping. Eventually. Whew. Well, we got it down. And we're on our wheels. The aircraft's intact and saved. And... Uh, <laughs> That was a blast. This thing doesn't like to glide. At all. Yeah, so, uh... I love the detailing on those speed brakes, by the way. Those are phenomenal. Look at those things. That is beautiful design of speed brakes. You gotta say, British aircraft might be stupid at times, but they can be beautiful as well. See, my engines... Wait a... Freaking minute. It's rolling back now. Is that going to start on me? Did it just not want to air start? Number two is, is coming up. Okay, uh, da, da, da. I did not plan for this video to be this long, by the way, but you know what? Screw it. It's been fun. And two, it's not going to light. It's just not coming up. Either way, so what do I think of the aircraft as, a, as a, an add-on? Because, you know, it's a very unique aircraft. It's not something you're going to get a ton of reflyability on. Actually, it's a blast. It costs €9.59 Euros from Sim Market, so about £10 for a tenner. You get to go nearly Mach 2, and I have been Mach 2 in this thing. You get this in the earlier version, which was not quite as fast. And you get a plane that wants to glide like a sandal hurled into a wood chipper. I guess I'm definitely only my test pilot stripes at the moment, because I just... Did, yeah. Nothing with wings like that glides well. Or engines this bloody size. Yeah, Royal Air Force, you're welcome. I brought this thing back in one piece. Now I quit. Goodbye.